Today's video is on the Airfix 148 scale BF109. I'll start out and say that I'm recording this after I've completed the model, but I wanted to be able to include some thoughts about the kit. When I first opened up the kit, I was initially underwhelmed by what I saw, especially the cockpit details, or lack of. According to Scalemates, this kit has origins dating back to 1978. Over the years, the kit has been updated since then, but I do have to admit that this kit does seem to be quite outdated. Going through the instructions, you start to get an idea of how quickly the build will progress. Flipping over to the back, this is the camo scheme that I chose, the same as the box art. At this point, I did not know anything about the story of Franz von Vera. But once I did some research, I became excited to finish the kit in order to share his remarkable story. So, the first part of the video will be about his story, then footage from the build itself. I've included the full build, but I've sped it up in order to condense the video so it isn't too terribly long. Baron Franz von Vera Born in July 1914 to an impoverished Swiss family, Von Vera was adopted into a wealthy German aristocratic household. He joined the Luftwaffe in 1936 and became a commissioned officer in 1938. He was involved in the French campaign where he claimed his first victory in May 1940. At the conclusion of the French campaign, Von Vera had four victories to his credit. On August 28, 1940, Von Vera gained fame when he returned home from a flight over England claiming an amazing nine victories in a single flight. While most of these victories were unwitnessed, he was credited with four confirmed victories. This brought his total to eight aerial victories, with the remainder credited as ground victories. The Third Reich's propaganda machine quickly took hold of this narrative, pushing von Vera into the spotlight of Germany and the wider world. With wavy blonde hair, clear blue eyes, and sporting a pet lion as his squadron's mascot, Von Vera rapidly became a propaganda hit. On September 5th, Von Vera was flying as an escort for a bomber formation when a squadron of RAF Spitfires attacked. It is unclear whether Von Vera's plane was hit by friendly fire from the bombers or was hit by a round from a British plane. What is known is that he tried to take his wounded plane back to the French coast, but was pursued and then shot down by a Spitfire. Von Vera skillfully crash landed his stricken airplane in a farming field near Kent, where he was then taken prisoner by the British. Now a prisoner of war in England, Von Vera made an escape on October 7th. On the cold, rainy night of October 10th, Two members of the Home Guard stumbled onto Von Vera's hiding place. The Home Guard tied his arms behind his back, but Von Vera was able to get an arm loose and pushed his captor to the ground, then escaped into the darkness before the other was able to subdue him. Von Vera remained on the run until his luck ran out on the morning of October 12th, when he was captured by police and returned to a German prisoner of war camp that he had escaped from. He was sentenced to 21 days in solitary confinement, but two days before he was due to be released from solitary, he was transferred to a different prisoner of war camp. With a remarkably unbeatable determination, Von Vera was involved in yet another escape attempt on December 20th. With the help of a small group of other German prisoners, Von Vera had secretly dug a tunnel beyond the camp walls. With forged identity papers, and some props to pass on as a Dutch pilot serving in the Royal Air Force, Von Vera made his way to a British airbase. Using his charm, charisma, and knowledge of the recent political events, the Dutch, Captain Von Lott, was able to get himself into the cockpit of a Spitfire before being apprehended by the base commander at gunpoint. Once again, Von Vera was sentenced to solitary confinement. On January 10th, 1941, the British officials decided to sail all German prisoners of war to Canada. On the Atlantic journey, Von Vera made fantastic plans to cause a prisoner uprising 
and gain control of the slow, unarmed ship. But a Royal Navy destroyer stayed near the prison ship convoy. The chances were too slim for the plan to be a success and was never attempted. Once on shore in Halifax, Nova Scotia, the German prisoners of war were loaded onto trains headed for the northern shore of Lake Superior, Ontario. Von Vera developed a plan to escape from Canada into the United States, which was officially neutral at that point in the war. As the train headed towards Lake Superior, it passed through Montreal and near Ottawa. Von Vera realized that this was very close to the United States border. Again, with the help of fellow prisoners, Von Vera was able to escape. The prisoners created a distraction, which allowed the Baron to crawl out of a window and jump into the snow. Once on foot, he found a map in a car garage and planned a route to cross the Lawrence River, which forms the border between the Canadian province of Ontario and New York. He crossed the river on foot, but discovered that the center of the Lawrence River had not frozen over. He then traveled a few miles down the shoreline when he found a cabin with a rowboat. Von Vera then pushed the rowboat across the ice until meeting the unfrozen section. He then used the rowboat to cross the unfrozen portion and was soon past the Canadian United States border. Now in the state of New York, Von Vera surrendered himself to the first police officer that he found. Because of US neutrality, the United States couldn't just return the German prisoner of war to Canada. While the US legal system figured out what to do with Von Vera, the German consulate smuggled the Baron out of the United States and into Mexico. From here he made his way through South America to Rio de Janeiro, then to Barcelona, then to Rome, and then finally back to Germany. Upon his arrival to Berlin, he was awarded the Iron Cross by Adolf Hitler. Already a German hero, his remarkable stories were used in further Nazi propaganda. In July 1941, von Vera was promoted to group commander of JG-53 and sent back to combat, this time the Eastern Front. He would achieve another 13 combat victories bringing his total to 21. By late September, JG-53 was pulled from the Eastern Front to be re-equipped with the new 109 F-4. On October 25, 1941, while stationed in the Netherlands, Von Vera took off on a practice flight and suffered an engine failure. His airplane then crashed into the North Sea. Baron Franz Von Vera's body was never recovered. He was 27 years old at the time of his death. The movie footage that you've seen in the majority of this video came from the film The One That Got Away, which was produced in 1957.